All right, so welcome to the first part of therapy in 2019 booklet. 2019 booklet. So I will start. Today's a special day, so I'll be starting. All right. So we have a 25-year-old woman who has been suffering from diabetes mellitus since she was nine. She was admitted into the nephrology unit with a significant edema of the face, the arms, and the legs. Again, we have established countless number of times that anytime there is edema formation, you are thinking of four basic components or four basic organs, which include the cardiovascular, I mean, the heart, the liver, the kidney, and then the GIT. The heart, kidney, the liver, and then the GIT. These are the four uh, basic organs where edema can, or when there's a problem with that organ, edema can develop. So I've mentioned them to you. Now, they are saying blood pressure is 200, 110. Hemoglobin level is 90. Creatinine level is 850. Proteins, 1. Leukocytes, 10 to 15. Glomerular filtration rate is 10. It's 10. The normal rate is about 25, if I'm correct. What? No, it's about 125, 120. Uh-huh. Now, what tactics should the doctor choose? What tactics should the doctor choose? Now, the normal range of GFR is 90 to about 120 milliliters per, per minute. So over here, there is what? A decreased glomerular filtration rate. In fact, 10. That means absolutely low. And creatinine level is also what? High. Normal range is around 53 to 125. 123, according to some books. 153 to 123. So having a creatinine level of 850 signifies that it is extremely high. And again, we are having signs and symptoms of a nephrotic syndrome. Why am I saying that? Because we have uh, proteinuria, high blood pressure, edema, and so on present in this patient. Okay, so obvious, already you and I know that this person's kidney is failing. The kidney is failing. And if the kidney is failing, what do you do? You either do a renal transplant or you do hemodialysis. Or you do hemodialysis. As simple as that. Now, looking at the two, it's quite difficult to get a transplant, isn't it? quite difficult to get a transplant. So over here, our likely answer should be what? We need to transfer this person into the hemodialysis unit. The hemodialysis unit. Now, so over here, your answer should be C. Your answer should be C. All right. So this question goes to Parry. Parry, let's go. Okay, um, a 59 year old woman was brought into the rheumatology unit. Uh huh. Extremely acro osteolysis. Okay. Um, in blood, erythrocyte is 2.2, um, ESR is 40, and in urine, we have elevated free, uh, elevated levels of free oxyproline. Name one of the most likely pathogenetic links in this case. Baha. Yes, let's go. What are you thinking? First of all, what ah, okay. diagnosis mm-hmm. are they giving you? They've given you a case of severe scleroderma. Yeah. Good. So scleroderma has to do with what? Good. Mm-hmm. Scleroderma has to do with abnormal growth of the connective tissue. True or false? Good. True. Good. So if connective tissue, which substance are abundant in the connective tissue? Which substances are abundant in the connective tissue? 
collagen. Collagen, exactly. And you also know that scleroderma is uh sorry, it's an autoimmune what reaction or autoimmune infestation, right? Yeah. Good. So that means that over here, your answer should be what? Formation of antibodies to the collagen. And don't forget, I've underlined this free oxyproline for you for a specific thing. Because when collagen is breaking down, you will see what oxyproline, you will see lysine, you will might even see glycine. So they tell you that there's elevated level of oxyproline, elevated level of glycine, lysine. What comes to your mind is the breakdown of what? Collagen fibers or, or infection or inflammation of the collagen fibers. And collagen fibers form part of the connective foot tissue. So when that happens, that is what we are going to see. So that is the mechanism of action or that is the pathogenesis of this scleroderma. All right? And that's what over here, your answer should be what? Should be A. Is that clear, Dr. Parry? Oh, yeah, okay. yes, Baha, Dr. Baha. Yes. Can we ask questions if you have? Please feel free. Um, Today we are just. Have to okay, you, you can ask if you can okay. ask. Yeah. Okay. Me, I was also thinking of bio, because I saw. Mass like face. The so mass like face. It's appeared. So you are thinking of itself. systemic lipos erythematosus. Yes. Good. Yes. But they've already told you that there is what an extremely severe case of scleroderma is suspected. So already they've given you what they are looking for. Do you get me? They have already given you what they are looking for. They are looking for a case of what scleroderma. Yes, indeed. We are having a mass like phase, we could be like a yeah, like a, that sort of a very typical in how do you call it systemic lupus. But for them to tell you that we are looking out for what scleroderma, definitely. But again, we are seeing this uh, oxyproline, and oxyproline again deals with collagen fibers, they deal with collagen fibers. Doc, I hope you are, you are getting me now. Yes, talk. So my network is misbehaving, but guys, forgive me, okay? All right. Good. So, go, go. Let's go. All of you, I know your name, so don't forget forget it. If you don't come, I'll mention your name. Go, go. Yes, Dr. Baha. Please, shoot. Let's go. <laughs> Just analyze, 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 analyze. That's okay. all. Analyze it. Mm -hmm. Man, on the third day of septic <laughs> zone treatments for the, for the acute otitis. Okay. Mm -hmm. Without mucus or blood admixtures, temperature is thirty six point six, which is okay. Um, this reaction has occurred blood blood in feces. Negative. Um, stool culture detected. Basically, everything's normal. So, in this case, an antibiotic antibiotic treatment, okay, because of the acute otitis. So, it's due to this um, antibiotic because it says nothing is wrong with this too. Everything is normal. Temperature is normal. Mm -hmm. um, there's no pathogenic germs. So, I will go for B, which is antibiotic associated. Diarrhea, good. Is secondary to the acute otitis. Yeah, thank you. Good. So you are absolutely right, and sometimes you might confuse this with this biosis, or yeah, basically sometimes we can confuse it with it. But then over here, due to the 
antibiotics we are giving, that is what is leading to the diarrhea. Okay. But of course, in dysbacteriosis too, when there is an imbalance of the microflora in the intestine, it can also lead to it. But for them to give us a pathogenesis or the genesis or the origin of the diarrhea, it is wise to say this is what antibiotic associated diarrhea. Not saying that if you say intestinal dysbiosis could be wrong or dysbacteriosis is wrong. No, it could be correct. Okay. But over here, they've given you the, the mechanism for which it is what happening. Okay. The mechanism for which it is happened. That's over here. We went in for what? For the antibiotic associated diarrhea. Okay. And basically, this requires no treatment. You just have to put the person on a supportive care by giving the person fluid as simple as that. The person will be back to normal. That's all. So your answer is correct. It's B. That's great. That's great. All right. At the point, I was not hearing you because my network was breaking. So I don't know if you guys also uh-huh. hear me that oh. way. Yeah. yeah. But you're absolutely right. All right. Good. Dr. Alphonse, my enemy. Alphonse, analyze the question. Let's go. Okay, Doc. Good. A chronic alcoholic was hospitalized into the therapeutic inpatient unit due to pneumonia. Mm-hmm. On the day five of his hospitalization, he became disoriented in time and space, developed fear-inducing visual hallucination and motor agitation. Full body trauma and trauma of the limbs are observed. X-ray and physical examination detect the signs of his covalence from pneumonia. What tactics should be chosen regarding this patient? Uh, on the three, they became disoriented, time space, and motor distance, full trauma. Chronic alcoholic, eh? he drinks a lot. Mm-hmm. And oh, okay. If then this one is, uh, um, if someone is drinking a lot and you hospitalize that person. Yeah. What could the person now? The person is not getting alcohol to drink. Oh. So, what do you think is happening to the guy? Mm. He'll be agitated and all that when he needs it. Like, but be, what is the thing? He's gonna the, show, like, uh-huh. the, is it delirium? Um, alcohol, yes, but alcohol the, uh, withdrawal, 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 good, yeah. exactly. So We've said if somebody is alcoholic, that means abusing the drug, I mean, it's abusing the alcohol. So, this kind of people, where do we put them? People who are. Them to the court. Thank you. So, why are you wasting your time? You have wasted two minutes on a question you can use 30 seconds to solve. Yeah. I did too. Maybe you didn't hear. Eh, okay, I didn't hear. So, I didn't hear. <laughs> so, it's narcotic department. Good. I didn't hear. I didn't hear. Forgive me. My network is messing uh, you, me up. You use all the data for video for the other time. Hey, okay. hey, hey. I'll, oh, I'll okay. get to you. <laughs> all right. So it's what? <laughs> Narcology <laughs> department. We have done it before, guys. This is because of what? The guy has been abusing. So now that you have hospitalized him, in the hospital, you can't get a call to drink, isn't it? You can't get it. So before you realize you're having what? Withdrawal sim- uh, symptoms or syndrome. Then... Yeah, so basically, this is what? Narcology department. So your answer is E. Your answer is E. All right. So let's move on. Dr. Juma, this is for you. Let's go. Where is Juma? Hello, Juma. Juma is not here. Okay. Juma, Juma has gone out. All right. So this goes to um, Eugenia. Let's go. Dr. Ba, okay. After me. eating shrimps, a 25 year old man suddenly developed skin itching. Some areas of his skin became hyperemic or erupted into vesicles. 
make the diagnosis. So develop skin itch. And right after I'll eating. I'll go for right after eating. Right guys. after eating. After so it's eating. air with it's something with allergic reaction. Thank you. So, so high the court. Thank you. Thank you. Please, everything is important too. Just look at the clue things and you are gone. Don't waste your time on any big, big grammar. <laughs> All right. So exactly. Acute uticaria. This allergic reaction. Acute uticaria. Any move away. No problem with anybody. That's all. I know where, I know where for uticaria is there. Is it hive or hive? And then you would pronounce it. But it's the same thing. So you're yeah, absolutely correct. Uticaria. All right. Good. This go to who are those people? Here? Hey. I come bills. Let's go. Eba. Yes. Shoot. Yeah, a 25 year old woman complains of fatigue, dizziness, hemorrhagic rashes on the skin. Mm -hmm. She has been presenting with these signs for her blood test. It was uh, it's 1.0. HB37, color index 1.1, leukocytes 1.2, platelet 4. 42. What analysis should be most should be the most advisable for diagnosis making in this case? Um, oh, you know, um, I think everything is because everything is everything is low. Good. But the color index is is moderately high. Good. So I'll go with uh, A, sternal puncture. Thank you. So you want to analyze the red bone marrow to see why the red blood cells, the white blood cells, the plates, they are all low, isn't it? You want, so this term is called pancytopenia. So you are suspecting pancytopenia here. So if you are suspecting pancytopenia, you know where the, uh, 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 the genesis of cells come from, isn't it? So you go straight there, analyze it, and you are done. So exactly, because of all the red blood cells are quite low, you want to analyze the origin or the, yeah, the origin or the stem cells of these uh, cells. 